Okay, folks, we're at Asgard Base. We're going to be looking at this. More than likely, this is the brightest star that we have in Pisces. And we will go ahead and take a look at uh, a shot of this map, which will show us what's normally basically would be the closest thing would be probably around, we get a 0, 2, 3, 4 there. We get a 0, 2, 3, 5 here. Uh, we will go ahead and look at what we got on the fireball thing that I found that the closest thing was on the 19th, 0 0.035 IU. So we have plenty of objects and they're seeing them in Georgia, uh, East Coast, uh, South Carolina, as you've seen my earlier videos and so forth and so on. So we have some new material that's being seen and so forth and so on. So let me go back to Asgard. And basically that is supposed to be uh, one of the brightest stars in Pisces. And let's go ahead and take a look at, this is a NASA photo of this, and basically it pretty much does look like the IRA, doesn't it? Very much so, it looks like the IRA. Okay, well this is a debris field that's around this planet that is known to be in that area. Okay, and let's go ahead and we'll give you, as we can click back real fast, and this will be wiki that will pretty much talk about it. And basically, that's what it is. For malt, from full malt. From all hot, from all hot, from all hot, from all hot B. <laughs> so, if we're saying it wrong, tough. And as you see, it pretty much looks like the eye raw. Go back to that real fast and get a little bit of smaller of a shot. There's your cat eye. Wink, wink, wink. Okay. So, a debris field. I think this is like a Hubble Space Telescope picture or whatever. I'm going to give you some data on it. It's one of the, the stars that basically helps to judge luminosity on a lot of other, uh, and basically two mass, I believe, uh, would it be the moon, I think, there on that mass, or possibly the sun. So anyway, and there is also a unique shot from space there too, but basically the Hubble has gotten you that nice shot there of it. Okay, so... More than likely, that's what we're getting on Asgard down here. And basically that shot there we want to look at. And we'll pop that up 200%. After the date, either the International Space Station has caught some more stuff. You'll end up seeing some debris or, or a planetary object or something like that to the left here. There you go. You can't miss it. I mean, you can see it. Okay. I'll just let it play. You know, black masses, but nothing. Sit here and watch this. I don't even give you any music. You can watch that. And it might get a little boring here. And if it does, I'll pop ahead of the video a little bit. You can see it's going to become closer. Now, this might have been what pushed down on and gave us that impression in Texas, possibly. Or who knows what, when. So... I mean, it's not a satellite. It's too damn huge. If it was, they'd be zoomed in on it and go, hey, there's a satellite and there's something wrong with the satellite or something to be some kind of sound or communication. So, so they zoom in on this. And I'm watching this live too, so I don't know. There's something about it. They said it's going to show up at 5 or something five minutes into the video so we'll see if we can save a little time here and there it looks like they just keep zooming in the camera on it and there we go and all I can do is trust the video and I'm not sure all I know is what we get this has got standard YouTube on might be scare some people but this might be a good example folks of how much that they can zoom in on something from space down here on earth they can read a newspaper ladies and gentlemen way back in the 60s so now is it a satellite they're checking in on or what is this that they get zoomed in on now basically that line is their uh, that their line is their zoom in thing now maybe they were checking out a satellite So 
so maybe this is just a satellite that they checked in on to but this footage is up on the internet so maybe have some cake bake here so Bina's gonna pull out of this and we'll just show you and you can go take a look at it and check it out yourself okay so let's go ahead and give you uh, and basically I think they're just checking out a satellite so from the space station there you go you know it's real footage from the mission station so it's supposed to be unless someone's cake baking us so you get an idea of how clear they can see something ladies and gentlemen so basically zoomed in on our satellite because you can see the solar panels so you get an idea of how good that they can see down onto Earth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they can zoom down all the way down to Earth and see something just as good as you. They just zoomed in on that satellite. Okay. So, and even if this is cake bake, that's pretty much how it works. Okay, they can zoom in on anything with their optics. Okay. And basically, this should be standard on this. I just bumped into this real fast. I was going to see what we got up there. So standard YouTube. So basically, this is Soyuz before docking at the International Space Station, okay? This is one of the Soyuz's either escape vessels or docking, okay? So this is actually part of the space station that ends up meeting up with the space station and docking. So the one thing that got me off the bat was the uh, orange peel and the pock marking of the clouds. And then there it is. So more than likely with going with that NASA map, more than likely that's what it should be. And I'm going to go see if we can find it on Wolf or Ram real fast. Let's see if it matches up. Because it's down in this region, so it should be it. So how much is three masses of Jupiter and twenty-five point something light years away. And basically we are gonna come down here and we are going to see where it's supposed to be in the nighttime sky, and we can probably this is more up to date now. What's interesting to do is we're gonna look at Asgard's map again, okay? This is current for North America, okay, folks? So this is all that stuff heavy over there to the right, okay? And these are all your constellations up there. There's North. So we've got a lot of heavy grouping over here to the right. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what Asgard had on there again. Okay, and so we show it way low right but also look at how off the charts that they have uh, programmed up that are basically way like I'm not sure what date of year that they have sometimes when they look at these but if you look at it this is the NASA one and how much higher it would normally be so data wise uh, even the Wolfie is showing it farther down and it's also showing up in the sky farther down so i.e. axis turn okay because as you see, what they're expecting it to be is about there, and they have the time on what they have GPL'd out. And then you get a lot of astronomers have, okay, that's what they have it figured out to be. And then you see where it's at, more than likely right there, okay, right? So we click on that. It's way more lower right, okay? And also on the fact of that when we were looking at Wolfie also shows it more current and down because all th this stuff gets instantaneously fed into the, all the mainframes in the world and then Wolfie picks it up gets all that mainframe action and adds it in okay so there you go no matter what we've got these dark stars okay so we've got dark something maybe more than likely planets because it's dark they're not bright stars okay dark 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 and dark okay and dark there also the most 
interesting thing is I was wanting to, okay, now look at the positioning wise and let me plop over to the one that's got the pointer. And that's what I'm still wondering is what are they looking at on this one that they constantly have the pointer on? Right here. Okay, so that's what I'm interested in looking at. So let's take a look. So those other stars that are up and they're dark, and okay, and then we know that the sun is unsettled. We know that. It's been goofy when they said it's calm. There's our aurora action. I don't think I have to explain that too much, but we're off our axis there. And off our axis at the north, so we're doing some nice twisting through space at 6,000 miles an hour, faster than our normal 60,000 miles an hour that we usually go through space. And let's look at some CME action that we've been seeing. I think I put a video up showing you that we were seeing this CMEs. You see this huge coming off the backside of the sun? Well, they swirl and come around towards Earth. And we had one that looked like it was coming directly toward us earlier. And now we have this action. So you got to watch your date and your time up here. And then queue up and see what we're going to have and what we're going to have. So definitely some action from the sun again. And basically we're seeing some key data down here on vacuum and so forth and so on in the ionosphere. That's very rare to see that redness. Okay, so basically the charts are basically spiking a lot on this one like nothing new that we haven't seen. Okay. And some dramatics. And dramatic on, like, also, as I said you know, earlier, dramatic wise. I don't know. So, for now, we'll see what else we can find here on the sun. So basically, we've got B here on what you're probably seeing on Asgard there, that brightness to the lower. Now, it's three mass of Jupiter, and we're going to go back to B here in a second because basically, we'll get a map on that. You just have to remember three sizes bigger than Jupiter, that's huge. Okay. Three masses bigger than Jupiter. Okay? Three masses of Jupiter, that's huge. And it's not that far away. Twenty five light years. Twenty five point zero four seven light years. Twenty five point zero four light years away. Let's give you a mileage on that. So you're safe. Hundred and forty seven point two trillion miles away, folks. But still, that's closer than a lot of stuff. That we see in space, and then they got they have uh, the star form hot, formal hot, formal hot. Okay, it's still damn hot because it's 87k, but it's only 2.2 masses of Jupiter. Either that or the Sun. I think that's Jupiter. So let's go down, and you can see where it's at. In the supergiant's main sequence. So the other B is close by, but much bigger than Jupiter. 2.2, and the other one was 3. Point something. And as you can see on the axis turn to the Asgard, you go back, and the idea that this is up to date with all the mainframe action, the feet, and so forth, and you basically can see axis turn because the idea that the NASA projected was about up here somewhere and we can see with the live pictures and so forth it's down here and also this data gets all the mainframes real fast and it's more basically exactly right there it's a little bit lower right axis turn so check out the NASA map they'll show it a little higher a little higher and to the right and basically end up seeing it down here and this is up to date so and you see the live pictures you saw earlier on Asgard is there's a huge shadow on behind H1 though because look at all the darkness folks and then we'll come down and we'll see the actual black and white and check that huge shadow out there as you can see that it's like a moon or something I mean we're looking at mass amounts of space folks see this darkness brighter shade over here and then you go up and we'll see the same thing of behind shot behind one and you see this huge huge darkness so something huge is shadowing as you can see right there, you can see the shade. And there you get the darkness there. In the but in that darkness in front of the sun.